Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Back here in my very glamorous office for a special episode. We have done this before. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Justin Urquhart Stewart. Now he is one of the founding directors, he's marketing director of Seven Investment Management, who you'll recognize from their logo, which is always down here in the bottom right. And it's there because Seven IM have been sponsoring me for nearly a year and a half now. And I'm extremely grateful to them for doing so, just as I say on every one of these videos. But Justin is arguably the most recognized financial commentator in the country. He's the sort of go-to man for any TV station or radio station looking for easy to understand uh, interpretation of what's going on in the economy and the world markets. So it's just great to have uh, an exclusive interview with Justin. So Justin, thank you very much for joining me here. It's a pleasure, Pete. Okay, so Justin, we've done this before, although not for a while, and the world continues to be a very volatile place, uh, lots of bad news, it seems. So I just uh, you know, appreciate the chance to get your opinion on what's going on. So I'm going to start, if I may, by asking you, you know, what's the latest, particularly in Europe and the Eurozone? Well, it is one of those stories where you almost have to take a step back because if you just look at the hyperbole and the headlines the entire time, we all get frightened to death. What's happening in the Eurozone is very, very slowly they are getting their act together. It's taking a long time. We still don't know finally what it's going to look like. What you have to do, though, is try and join the dots together. What you can see here is they've got 17 nations slowly trying to reach an agreement. But, of course, you're going to have to deal with not the individual elements of the symptoms, which is the Greek crisis, the Spanish crisis, the Irish crisis, but the underlying cause, getting the disciplines right into running a single currency. Now, given this is much more political rather than just financial, it is probably going to happen, but it's going to be a rather painful process. And I believe, actually, that you'll end up probably with a core of a smaller Eurozone group of nations who are willing to have single bank unification in terms of their regulation and control, willing to have a proper fiscal union to make sure that they haven't all got the same taxes, at least they're harmonized, making sure they sign up to the debt rules and regulations under Maastricht and run it as a single currency just as we have in Britain here. We have a single currency in Britain. Money is saved into a bank in Penzance and it's lent out, well it would have been when banks used to lend out, to a company outside Reading in the computer world. We then have to push money back to Penzance again. That's what it's all about. So we need to get back to those disciplines. They will get there eventually, but it's going to be a fairly painful process. I've heard you sort of uh, mention in the past that in the US, of course, you know, there's 50 odd states and they have their, their own individual tax systems, but there's also like a federal tax system above everything. Is that where Eurozone is heading? Yes, they've got their 50 odd states. Some of them are very odd. Um, and of course, some of them are actually in exactly the same position as Greece. Uh, rather perversely, if you go to Athens in Illinois, not the other Athens, it's got virtually the same financial problems as Athens. It's already having to cut its Medicare and Medicaid bill. Um, because bear in mind, in America, by the way, we always think that we have the NHS and we spend so much on our health care services. Actually, the Americans spend more per head than we do. Um, and uh, so what they're going to have to do is carry out some very, very distinct changes, but maybe that's for another subject. Now, what's happening in America, that you have your local taxes, you have your federal taxes. In the Euro EU, I or Eurozone, I suspect you won't end up with federal taxes, but at least you'll have harmonized local taxes. That's to say, making sure everybody's actually having their tax system so they can link together rather than in competition with each other, and to make sure that their debt levels are being properly run and not running out of control, as we saw with some of those Latin nations. Okay, so there were some of the, perhaps had better not mention any particular nations, but their tax systems are obviously going to have to get a lot more efficient than they are at the moment. Well, they have to start paying them to start with, which would be quite helpful. Um, but of course, one of the problems we've got is that we've actually in a position now, we've got countries like Greece, they're not just in a difficult situation, they're in a dire situation. You know, they've been in, in recession for five years and the outlook for another five years of recession. I mean, if I were a Greek, I'd be trying to find a brick to throw at somebody as well, because you just want to have some growth. So something's got to change. And I still believe we may well end up with something like a split currency. So you end up with a core of the Eurozone and maybe 
some of those other nations having a lower level of currency, a domestic currency, still being within the Eurozone, but d d as it were, d going back to a form of something like the, the Totnes pound, if you like, but on a slightly larger scale. It's been done before in South Africa and Belgium, but, and also Cuba, but that's not such a good example for capitalism. So if, uh, I almost hesitate to ask this, if you were Angela Merkel, you know, what would you be wanting to see happen? What was, what's the sort of next step? Well, Angela, Angela Merkel has been taking steps over the past few months, and everything's been on delay, unfortunately, for two months, because we had the two most important elections. Both, of course, were French. The Greek one was almost irrelevant. One, of course, was Hollande getting elected, and the other one was his parliament getting elected, supporting Hollande, which almost gives him the same powers as Napoleon, which is actually quite useful, because it means, therefore, he and Merkel can now start making some progress. Now, it's not black and white. It's not Merkel, I'm for austerity, uh, I'm Hollande, I'm for growth. Actually, what you've seen in Germany is Mrs. Merkel already allowing, actually, one of the, well, the largest fusion, IT Metall, trade union a uh, inflation-busting uh, agreement of 4.3%. And the Bundesbank also allowing a bit more inflation. This is radical stuff for Germany, remember, because it's in their brain, in their blood, that uh, the fear of inflation and the Weimar Republic. And the same for Hollande as well. Hollande realizes it's not about growth. He's got to get things under control as well. And he's got an economy not in a very good state. But what has happened is you've seen a slight change in tone at the last summit that we had. We've now had 19 summits on the euro. That's more summits than the Himalayas. What you've actually got here, therefore, is a change in tone and attitude towards a little bit more towards growth. That, of course, is actually what the eurozone needs. But at the same time, you've got to have the discipline to control the austerity. But it takes time. So we have to wait to the next stage, and the next stage is going to be Will they agree further controls and disciplines between the groups? And I still suspect, actually, Greece may well end up not being chucked out, but probably ending up as a secondary currency. So there's 20-odd miles of choppy sea between us here and Europe. Why should we care about all that's going on? I always loved that old headline, wasn't it? Fog in the channel, uh, continent cut off. Uh, our attitude towards the rest of the continent. Um, but of course it does impact on us. 40% of our exports go to the Eurozone. We need the Eurozone to be operating effectively. This is no time to be just a little Englander to be able to say it's nothing to do with us. Of course it is. But of course this is actually a global picture as well. And as we're talking today, we've just had the figures out of China showing their slowdown as well. In America we've got lower, slower growth there. And so so the global economy is slowing down. It's probably somewhere below 3% at the moment. But around about 3% is the long-term long -term growth rate. So it's by no means a disaster, but it is a lower, slower period we're having to go through. And for all your clients and everybody's portfolios we look after, this is important because it means the strategic uh, returns that you're getting in the longer term are also lower for the time being because we've had quantitative easing, money being pumped into the system and therefore in a position where people's returns will be lower for the time being. So we must work harder to try and find returns that above all what should the costs for investment absolutely crucially. Okay, there's so much good stuff coming from Justin that I'm just going to sort of take a break here and cut this video off which means we'll finish this interview next time. So if you've got any questions about what you've heard already drop me an email pete at meaningfulmoney.tv Hit me up on Twitter, just at Pete Matthew or at Meaningful Money, take your pick, um, or leave a comment under the video here. Tons of ways you can get in touch. Any questions, then, uh, then get in touch, and I'll do my best to answer them. But we'll be back with Justin next time. So thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you next time.